G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here once again on the brand new expansion for Age of Empires 4. This is the Sultan's Ascent. Today we've got an absolute amazing matchup for you. An old Civ up against a new civilization. Two of the world's best players up against each other. Let's introduce our contestants. In the south side of the map in the color teal playing as the Japanese, we've got Crackety here. And in the north of the map, in the color pink, playing as the Rus. We've got FAQ, who could be called Fuck. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a casted game. If you are enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, please leave a like on the video, because I'm pretty sure we probably just got demonetized uh, because we swore within, like, what, the first 30, 40 seconds? Anyway, uh, we did, I didn't, I'm not swearing. I'm just saying a name. I mean, I've been demonetized many a times on my videos just because I've been misinterpreted as an Australian. And you've got to understand, as an Australian, we've got an accent. We've got a little bit of lingo going on. I, I remember one word that I said. Oh, my Lord. They thought it was a racial slur. I'll, I'll tell you what the... I'm not going to say what the word was, but there is a word that's used to describe the sound of metal hitting another metal. Uh, and it is an onomatopoeia. And I used that word and I got demonetized because they're like, that's a racial slur. You can't say that. I like, I contacted like, I literally, I called my representative, man. I, I, I hooked, I'm, I'm like, yo, 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 what's going on here? He's like, there's nothing I can do. Anyway, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about today's matchup because we've got an absolutely amazing one here. The Rus, an old civilization considered by many to be one of the better civilizations, but somewhat falling off a little bit when it comes to the competitive, competitive priority. Uh, and the Japanese, of course, everybody's favorite from the brand new expansion. This civilization has been very popular amongst many people and myself included. I'm loving this kind of opening that we're getting here from Crackety. It's a little bit weird, a little bit wacky, and I got no idea what the plan is for him. He is starting to gather up a fair bit of gold here. You can see he's kind of working towards the food as well. Just going for the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. A little bit. I'm feeling almost like he might be going for an Uma Benaman. Uma, Uma Benaman? Uma Benaman opening. A, a cav opening. Let's just go with that. Or a stable opening. Uh, we can go with that as well. Uh, but uh, it is, it's a slow and steady, steady gather rate that he's got here on the forge. On the, uh, on the gold vein as well. So far, doing a pretty decent job with the sheep as well. It's important to note that on this map, people do often get, myself included, absolutely destroyed on the sheep count. But I can tell you what. Bringing back eight sheep, it's going to feel good. You're going to feel good. You didn't You didn't lose the game because you didn't have sheep. I'm not kidding you. I, I just played a game just then uh, against somebody pretty good, Conqueror 3 player. I got one sheep. And when I had my like my single sheep and I was going back to my base, she killed my last sheep. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, dude. Oh, it was so painful. Like the whole map. And I went in and looked at the replay and she had like 20 sheep, 22 sheep or something like that. It was crazy. Oh, it was terrible. It felt bad. It felt bad. But anyway, look, Crackity's not going to be feeling that today. Kremlin coming up on the other side of the map for FAQ here. Both of these players with their gold and stone in front of their base. I love this. Can we just always have this? Can we just always have mirrored spawns? Look at this. Gold stone front of the base buries to the side. Gold stone front of the base buries to the side. This is just, this is what, this is what spawns should be. They should always be mirrored like this. And I love it. I, I think it's so lovely to be able to come into a game here uh, and know that, you know, my gold and stone is going to spawn X away from my TC and vice versa. Kura Storehouse now going to be coming up for Crackety. Interesting position. Not quite far away enough uh, or not quite close enough to the uh, the forest here, but still close enough that you could probably use it as a drop-off point if you wanted to. We can see he's now starting to pick up that straggler as well and working towards... Have a look at this. Look at this timing that's coming in here. Working towards that all-important... Daimyo Mana. Damn you, man. I, uh, I, I got a notification on my phone at the same time. I'm telling you what, this cast feels like it might be a cursed cast. You know, sometimes you roll the dice and you get a cursed cast. It's, it's one of those casts where no, things don't necessarily go wrong, but it, it's just like things are getting, things are wild. Let's just put it that this way. All right. Well, on the age up through, Crackety's got 183 gold in, in the coffers. I've got no idea what the plan is with this. He's not spending it. He did also look to pick up the Tawara upgrade early on in the game. Though, this is after the age up has come through. Scout's now just being annoying to Crackety. And you can see that FAQ is doing a really good job of uh, annoying Crackety here. Causing the Bills to get idle, but he's got him stuck. Oh no, Step Bro, get out of the dishwasher. What are you doing in the dishwasher? You're, you've are you been you've been in the washing machine for the last couple of years. And now all of a sudden you're in the dishwasher. Get out of there. And he gets out of there. He gets gone. 
I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. The villagers literally entered the dragon, except the dragon was actually a fire-breathing horse, and it wasn't fire-breathing, it was a horse, and it was disgusting, because that is illegal. Age up comes through now for Cracky. A little bit after the five-minute mark. He's got enough resources almost to throw down that stable, if that's what he's looking for. He is working towards that gold still, 200 gold. It's going to be a Rax that he throws, throws down. What is he up to today? Because, you know, with the Japanese, one of the things that I think is so important about this civilization... They are a competitive civilization with the builds that we've got at the moment, but they still feel like there is so much room to cook with them. It, it feels like this civilization has got a huge amount to offer in regard to versatility. And we're seeing it here with the barracks opening, just opening up with a spearman going straight into the hardened upgrade. So we'll be looking out for that early night, as we can see coming out now. And it looks like that scout might go down indeed at will. So Crackity going to be playing in the dark. Oh, up against a very high-rated opponent. Remember, the FAQ currently sits at rank 5 on the ladder. Crackity here about rank 17, rank 18. So slightly, ever so slightly uh, lower than him. About one deviation uh, lower. But now, on the other side of the map, we see that second TC placed down early on for FAQ. Now, what's the deal... What's the deal? I feel like uh, Jerry Seinfeld right there. What's the deal? What's the deal with gathering all this early gold? I, I still don't get it. I've got no clue what the plan was here. I mean, we, we've seen plenty of builds in the past that just don't rely what whatsoever on going into that gold, and yet he opts for it quite heavily. And yet still we see no no real expenditure there. Obviously, he's gone into Tawari. He's going into Takazuki, Takaziki, Takazaiku, Takazaiku, Takazaiku. But still that doesn't answer the question because there's still quite a bit sitting there. But night now coming around. Nice little wall coming through for Crackity. Walling to the berry bushes. That, that's, that's a... That's a can, I'll be honest. It's, it's not my favorite kind of wall. Walling to the berry bushes. I always kind of like to go around the berry bushes. You never know with the berry bushes if they're going to let the enemy in or not. But this is, a, this is a good... Pretty decent spawn here for Crackity. You can see there's pretty much no way here for his opponent to get into the base. He's trying his best to find a way through here. But... Absolutely nothing. And now Wall's going to be coming up on that top side of the map. Very interesting style from FAQ. Looking to play it very passive early on here. A t second Town Center coming through. Not going to be looking for a third TC. And now Crackity going to be moving that second TC down as well. Up towards the front. Triple Spears out. And just playing it casually. Still, I'm, I'm still so confused about that gold, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to message him after and be like, yo, what's the deal? What's the deal with the gold? I still don't know. Spears had the option to go for a little bit of a poke. Decided they're not going to do it. Walk past and, and do a little bit of a, a take back and, or a, a second take. Like, wait a minute. You, you're killing my villagers. And then they're like, yeah, well, hey, you, you, you're meant to be killing us. And uh, neither player neither player lost anything out of it. Another wall coming up. Beautiful little wall, wall base. Walled base. Beautiful little base wall. Beautiful little base coming here for Crackity. He's going for a almost complete wall. With an exception to this top side. And I, I love this. It's almost like with this change, we're starting to see an AoE 2 of Age of Empires 4. It, to me, I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing this a lot in my games. Whenever I'm playing, I'm just making this cute little star fort. And it, it's kind of beautiful, right? Because you can just... You can't... You're impenetrable. I, I wish we could zoom out a little bit more just to get a, a, a bird's eye view of this. But it, it really feels like you're up against... You're... You're, you're undefeatable inside that. No one can stop you. No one no one can do anything against you when you've got your Star Fort walls up. Of course they can. They can, they can. they can make a third TC. They can go Castle Age. They can do all that kind of shenanigan. But speaking of that kind of shenanigan, have a look at this. we got Archers now beginning to come up for FAQ. Not yet moving out across the map, but we do start to see he is br bringing those forces towards the center. Second scout now going to be coming out here as well for Crackity. He hasn't put down a stable, so he's had to make this one the old-fashioned way with the town center. So essentially losing out a villager there. You can see that second scout almost going down here as well. Crackity now pushing out. There is an archer here, and he's not paying attention. Going to be losing these spears almost certainly. There's just no, no way they survive. Not through this, and an early investment for Crackity that just kind of gets thrown away. But he does get some information here. He gets some information that his opponent is adding in archers at this stage. But the question's always going to be about how many are they adding? Because you don't know whether it's going to be five archers. You don't know whether it's going to be 46 archers. You know that it's 2TC, but the question's going to be what comes after that. And Crackity is still in the dark here. Outpost going to come up. Arrow slits on the way as well. Didn't opt for the town center towards the front, playing it a little bit safer here. Of course, you don't want to expose yourself to a potential battering ram. We've seen additional outposts coming up, and Crackity playing absolute feudal age base defense. We got we got to get a picture of this. Look at this, just the perfect little base right here. The the this right here 
I, I'm in love. I'm in love. I absolutely love playing this kind of style. And you can see he's doing everything he can to stay alive. Meanwhile, behind this, his opponent is getting further and further ahead. We know that he's about to go castle. We know that he's about to put the Abbey of the Trinity down. And that means that relics are going to be on the menu. And that's something that you never want your opponent to have on the menu without you also having access to them. Because it just makes for a really... <clears throat> My trade house is coming up. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sometimes I say things and those things aren't always correct. Uh, but in this case, it, it, it is one of those times. It's, it's one of those times. Numbers continuing to build though for FAQ. No longer making any units, but we do see triple archery range coming down. So is there the potential that we see a horse archer transition here? Horse archers could be quite strong in this situation here. I'm, I'm expecting we're probably going to see horse archers, maybe even crossbows. Probably horse archers. I, I like the cavalry kind of opening here. FAQ now. We'll, we'll be about to click up or click on some units. Come on, FAQ. Show us what you got. It's going to be crossbows. All right. Ops for the crossbows. And now going to be looking to put on the pressure. Keep in mind, Samurais could be coming out at any point. He's going to be mindful of that. Floating gate now going to come down. Only a handful of vills on the wood. Not a lot of resources in the bank. He is going to drop down this stable. So I suspect probably looking to put a Yoroshiro into that stable. Scout comes out, sees the landmark. How many trees do you guys reckon are on it? I don't reckon this is the best one. I, I reckon there's probably going to be like 48 trees. 52. All right, 52. Pretty close, pretty close. Definitely not the best one that we've seen. I, like, I, I reckon you probably could have just thrown it down here and it might have got more. Yeah, for sure would have got more. Definitely would have got more. Scout, no. No, not again. Crackety, please. Somebody stop him. But looks like he will live. Floating Gate now coming up. Plus one ranged armor also on the way as well for Crackety. And the age up now online. Crackety playing a very solid base defense. The Ring of Steel is still well and truly alive. Yoroshira picked up. Where does he throw it? He's got one stable, two stables. Is he going to go double stable Yoroshiro? Oh, no way. No way. No, he's not. Okay, he's going to put one in the stable. Second one's going to go into the forge on the front. So basically playing one for the economy and one for me. FAQ. Really starting to build up a, a bit of a lead here. Even though he's on two TCs, he continues to push with the villager count. I don't know exactly how he's doing this. Monastery is down as well. Expect him to start picking up relics very, very quickly. And we've just got a very slow build at this stage. Two civilizations that love to go two TC. Slowly approaching the eruption. You guys know the eruption. The eruption I'm talking about. Like that volcano. It just kind of simmers there. Sits. And then, boom. Big explosion. Mounted Samurai now out on the field here. We can see that plenty of units from FAQ guarding up all the relics. He's got units pretty much everywhere just looking to pick these up. And now those Mounted Samurai are going to come out. He will spot the Warrior Monk as well. Spearman joining the fray. You can see the Shinto Priest trying its best to get out to this relic. Nice little block attempt from Crackety. Able to block that charge from the Knight. And will be able to pick up the relic as well. Additional Mounted Samurai now going to start coming out from him. And he looks to begin taking over this game, but the, the crossbow numbers are starting to build here. Might have to think about moving into horsemen potentially to deal with this. Alternatively, can just mass up the mounted samurai and should do pretty well with them as long as he makes sure he micros. That's the key. You've got to be getting in on top of those crossbowmen. Relic now safely picked up here. Expect to see in the back of the base somewhere some sort of uh, Shinto shrine. Stone's already been finished. Crackety going up now to the Daimyo Palace continues to hold in the formation, but his opponent is slowly taking the map. Look at FAQ. Doing a really good job of just forcing map control. Saying, I'm going to take this side of the map. You're going to take that side. And by that side, it's like... <laughs> look at this. It's like the Ring of Fire. It's it's actually hilarious when you look at it on the minimap like that. It's my walls, your walls. All right, farms now are going to start to come up. Now, remember, Cracky can always delete these walls. These walls really do feel like they're they're blocking you in quite a bit. But remember that you can always delete. That's the important thing to remember. Crackety brings back the relic, places it down, and says, all right, I'm coming out for the next one. Where are we going? Warrior Monk's out here ready to take the relics on the top side. He's already picked up three FAQ. This is going to be the fourth one. Or is it? He could have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Goes for the charge. Wallala! Not going to connect. It could have, it would, it was so damn close though. It was so damn 
close. He's got another Warrior Monk here. We'll look to pick this one up. There's plenty of units here coming out from FAQ. He's got more than double, way more than double what the opponent has got at the moment. He's going to sacrifice a couple of Shinto or a, uh, a couple of Mounted Warriors and will indeed take four out of the five Relics for this game. At this point, FAQ is feeling pretty good about himself. He's maintained the 2TC. He's picked up four out of the five Relics. He's got really good wall coverage across the map. He's going to be safe from raids. The one question is going to be about whether he's going to be able to take the Japanese in the late game. Because if you want to fight the Japanese in the late game, you're going to be in for a hard time. We've got a civilization that absolutely excels in the late game. Let's take a look at those encumber minutes. Get a bit of an idea on where these two guys are. It looks like about 3k versus about 2.7, 2.8k. Somewhere around that number. And now... Crossbows just dishing out the damage on the back. Where at this point you see this many units, you need a mango. You need a mangonel when you see this many units. There's no two ways about it. It's the most effective way to force a, or to play against this because this is such a potent combination. You're playing up against spear, crossbow, and now we see the militia making their way out as well. Crack it, he's gonna try and delay the inevitable and you can see the power of that wall oh he gets it up but he's gonna burn it down the power of that wall and now all of a sudden crackety gonna be able to control the narrative in this game and say you were you wanted to write a chapter about how you pushed me with crossbow spear and i i surrendered well my friend it's not happening today we're gonna write a chapter about how i broke through your walls at the last second and managed to begin hitting you from multiple angles with my raiding units. A couple more villages up towards that top side, but cavalry slowly getting caught here. You can see he's got plenty more down here towards the south side. Can easily just run along to this edge, build a gate, and then just wait it out if those units do get pretty close. And you can see now, looks like villages are on the move, but it's just going to be for other reasons for the moment. Has Kraken scouted this out? No, he's only just scouting it out. This whole south side of the map still un undiscovered, unvisited. Nice little position here for Krakeny. He's going to be able to even up the village account pretty well. Up to 11 worker kills now. Krakeny having an absolute field day. Did a pretty decent job on that top side as well. Mounted Samurai together with the Uma Bannerman. He managed to split off a Bannerman into both sides of the field here. Now Krakeny's found himself with a nice little lead, killing 16 workers. How did he get 16 workers? I mean, we saw that he's killed probably, what, five, eight workers here on the south side. But I only saw one worker kill here, two worker kills Maybe you got a couple more back here on the wood line, potentially? I'm not 100% sure, but it was absolutely magnificent from the man. That was incredible to see. And now, all of a sudden, we got Yumi Ashigaru coming out. Excuse me? Sir, are you aware of the year? Are you aware of the date? Yumi Ashigaru. This is kind of wild. This was not, was not something I expected, but I guess the reality is he has seen what's coming, right? He sees the crossbows. He sees the spears. He can make a decision. Do I go into Mangonels? Do I go into Archers? Because those are the two units that really do effectively against Crossbow Spear. And you know what he did? He, he did both of them. He said, we'll take both. And he puts the Yorishira in the Siege Workshop on the front line. Very, very bold. FAQ going to be pushing up here. Sees the Siege Workshop. Sees the Yorishira inside it. And sees the Mangonel behind it. The best thing to do right now is FAQ. Just push or fall back. Just drop a Siege Workshop down. You got to decide on this one where you're putting it though because it's very important. I'd be throwing it down maybe here and then you'd be looking... Oh, he's already got the Siege Workshop down. Okay, that'll work. Trebuchet going to come out of all things? Hmm. I, I think the big thing right now for FAQ is he probably needs to put down a secondary Siege Workshop because he's going to be up against a Yorushiro... Um, a, a Yorushiro Japanese Siege Workshop, which means they've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of power, a lot of potential uh, to be pumping out mangoes quickly and sprinkles quickly. And you can be on the same field as them just because in the event... This is why, this is why, for anyone wondering, this is why we don't wall to the berry bushes. Uh, this, this happens all the time, for anybody wondering. So, let this be a lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Do not wall to the berry bushes, uh, or the Uma Benamen will get away. Look at that, look at that sad boy right there. Crackety finally gonna pick up that relic. It's got a Shinto Shrine somewhere, I'm sure. Nope. God, look at that production. Why does it feel like the Japanese are the only civilization that can do this and get away with it? I feel like I'm always just... I'm, I'm, I've am I'm never got enough production with the Japanese. That, that's my... That's the way I feel. Numbers here. Looking really good for FAQ. At this point, Crackety would be a, a... Making a giant mistake to fight against this. That's on the condition that he doesn't get good mango shots. If he gets good mango shots, he'll be fine. But you never know when you're going to get good mango shots and, until you get them. Uh, that, that's what they say. Yumi Ashigaru now going to start pushing up, looking to try and range out the opponent. He's got the plus three ranged attack here. Veterancy has come through. And now those mangoes going to be looking to tee off. 
popping down on the villagers. He forgot about the villagers. He pulled the army back. And now, looking on that front side, the spears. Big shot onto the back. Double Sprinkle did come out. That's what he was looking for. FAQ before he, he took this fight. He said, you know what we need? We need the spears, or, or rather, we need the springs online. And then we can fight. And look at that. The Sprinkles coming up. I guess they've got their greased axles because they are moving quickly. Indeed, they do have their greased axles. That is how you do it right there. FAQ demonstrating how to put a little bit of a, uh, a problem on the Japanese side. And you can see the Sprinkles coming out, responding. Oh, beautiful little micro right there. Coming out from FAQ. No, no tilted Imperial Age at this stage of the game. But, but, does feel like we're on, we're getting to that point. Numbers are really starting to push. It's now or never for Krakeny. He cannot lose this Siege Workshop. He probably needs to bring villagers up to repair this. If he, if he loses this Siege Workshop, he loses the Yorishiro. And that's a one every four minute kind of thing. And now those archers are going to be forced back away from this. And you can see the importance the significance of having those mangonels. Those mangonels are what are going to enable you to deal with these crossbows on the back line. Because the archers just get forced away from everything. Bannerman just tanking it up on the front line. Vils still not yet pulled on that siege workshop. Only got the one trebuchet here. Looks like the, the siege workshop will be going down here, losing the Yorishiro. And that's a feels bad moment. He'll need to put down another three siege workshops if he wants to get the value of this siege workshop. Now it does go down. Obviously, a lot's going on for Crackety behind the scenes here. And that naturally means his attention's not always where ours is. We're always looking at the units, but the players, you've got to remember, they're always looking at the bases. Speaking of the bases, look at this. FAQ up 1,400 score at the moment. Tell you what, starting to look a little bit sour here for Crackety. is beginning to move into Odachi. A very good upgrade, but it is for Samurai. And remember, you're playing against an opponent who has had a very nice switch. I I'm going to remark on FAQ's tech switch here. Well, not tech switch, but just unit switch, right? Starts off with the knights. Follows up with a couple of archers. Begins, goes to castle. Starts making crossbows and then adds in lots of spears. Sees that his opponent has the mangoes. Falls back to springles. Then with those, pushes forward, but at the same time, begins transitioning into men at arms to deal with the archers. It's just such a clean transition coming out from FAQ. And that's part of the reason why we continue to see him just absolutely demolish his opponent here. Another Yorashiro going down. Look at the difference between these armies at this stage. Crackety here forced into a really terrible spot. He does have that ring of defense still somewhat up here. Relic on the ground, by the way. Still yet to put that inside. We're going to enter into the cinematic mode as these Springles fire off at each other. He's yet to have a Manganel out right now. He needs one, though. And you can see he doesn't even have one in Q Yoroshiro in the back there. That's where I would have loved the first Siege Workshop. But unfortunately, not going to be going the way or going his way today, it seems. Men at Arms on the front, just able to tank up so many shots on the backside. And now we can see the archers together with the crossbows just teeing off on these units, cleaning up absolutely everything. But remember that you're fighting into the Japanese production and that's what you've got to be careful of. You don't want to mess with it. Now the numbers, I mean, th this is just looking really bad. A single mangonel coming out now. Springles have done a decent job to clear the field and the mangonel should actually be able to hold in this position. I think the, si the single mangonel is what's going to be able to do it. He's lost the, uh, the Springles. And as a result, FAQ will need to fall back. And now we see that second mango coming out. You definitely can't play with that. The, the hero Manganel manages to save the day for Crackety here and survives just a slight little bit longer than uh, what he should be. Have a look at that military pop difference. And now moving up, a little bit of a mistake here from Crackety. He, he's overexposed. You can see Crackety could be in trouble here. We just we just heard some, some uh, typing right there. That could be GG that's getting typed in. Is that GG? Mango gets blocked by its own spears. Crackety trying his best to pull it out. You can see the town center is just pumping out villagers nonstop. He's got so many queued up here. A lot of resources in the bank. Crackety holding on for dear life at this stage. Yorishiro on the ground. He needs to plonk it into another building. Triple Mango now on the back. He needs to move into Spear Mango. Spear Mango will be able to save him here. Another Mango. Is this the hero that we've been waiting for? I need a hero. I'm calling for a hero. It's a big hero shot comes through. He's got another one loading up. And remember, he's got a second Manganel. Don't play with fire. You're going to get burned. FAQ cops another hit on the front. The Samurai are out. Don't dance with him. The Japanese player cracking me here. He knows how to dance. I've seen this guy. I met this guy over in Heidelberg. I tell you what, he knows how to dance move or two. And it looks like he is pulling out one today. <laughs> Did you see that defense right there? The Ring of Steel still lives. Crackety holding on for dear life. Double the military population. 
his opponent has currently. And now we see that Imperial Age coming through. It feels like FAQ realizes he might not be able to crack this nut with just Castle Age units. Needs to go Imperial Age. Look to get that Springled upgrade. Look for Bandit Arms. Look for your Roller Shutter Triggers and then push in. Clean that out completely. Expect to see a couple more Minute Arms rally to the front and then that'll be it straight towards that Imperial Age. You can see he's got plenty of resources in the bank. And now Crackity going to be looking to upgrade to the, the Shogunate Castle. Do you dare? No, Springles going for a kiss. Unfortunately, this is not the time for kisses. And Crackity loses the Springle. Is he thinking about Imperial as well? Look at this. The number's not the best for him. 167. And now the Shogunate Castle looking to defend. Is he going to be able to snipe out the Springles? He's, he's, he's focusing on the units. We can see now the Springle is targeted. Oh, big shots. Who, need, who needs Springles when you've got a Shogunate Castle? Now I'm asking the real questions. High Armory comes up. No real surprise there. Thought it would be coming down in this position as that's where we've got our Siege Workshop. He's got another one here. Where's he putting this, the High Armory? It's got down here? But your Siege Workshops are nowhere near there. FAQ. I'm going to have to... I'm going to ask you to write an FAQ. I'm going to need some answers here, my friend. This, to me... And your Gold Villages as well? Hmm. All right. All right. Let the man cook. We'll see what he's cooking. Behind this, look at this. Takanashima Gunsmith, they're both racing to Imperial. They both recognize the window. Crackney somehow manages to get a reasonable a reasonable position here on that Imperial Age. Now, it's going to be a while that his opponent is sieging down this Shogunate Castle. Crackney's got a couple of villagers here repairing this up as well. 13,000 health. Keep that in mind. And now Crackney with no walls on this top side will expose himself here. Spearmen do come forward with their veteran. See, Onabagaisha also through. And with the tag and a Shima Gunsmith, that's going to bring Crackity right online. That's going to give him... Ex uh, it's going to give him access to Ozutsu. One of the best units in the game. One of the... Uh, arguably one of the most overpowered units in the game at the moment. And we can see he brings five of them out here. This unit is particularly good against crossbows. Keep in mind, crossbows are good against them, though. They are heavy ranged gunpowder infantry. But the fact is... Often with crossbows, you're looking to keep them in this line formation that's going to stack them up all nice together. Oh, he deletes a couple of archers right there on the front. Probably wanting to get a little bit of siege out, I would suspect. Maybe another mangonel, maybe another springled or two. It's he's at 194 population. And now running underneath the Shogunate Castle, it's going to be dangerous for him, but he is going to commit here. We see immediately he rings that bell and all the villagers go scrambling into the town center. And indeed, he's going to go into a couple more siege engines here. We see adjustable crossbars going to be coming through for him. Looking to pick up more and more upgrades and crackety manages to hold out it has been an absolute giga chad defense right now we may actually be seeing a defensive masterpiece from crackety here this is starting to look like viper levels of defense the way he is holding on the way he is never giving up and never surrendering uh, we heard those we heard that chat message go through right then it, uh, what else could have it been was it maybe FAQ taunting him, saying like, question mark, question mark, like, why aren't you giving up, that sort of thing? Third trebuchet now coming out for FAQ as well. The economies at the moment look like it's about 5k for FAQ. About 4k here. About 4k for Crackity. So FAQ with a significant advantage. Remember that FAQ did pick up four out of the five relics, but Crackity has something better than relics. He has Yoroshiro. Let's see if we can find them. We know that he's lost two, at least. Three with this stable. He lost one in the stable. He lost the siege workshop. He lost the forge. But behind this, he's got one in the barracks. One in the siege workshop. Is that it? Is that it? This man's playing the most overpowered landmark and he's not even doing the most overpowered thing with it. That is absolute ludicrous. Look at the upgrades coming through now. Oda Tactics on the way. Yaki Ida in coming through as well. He's looking to go max upgrades here. He's got 28 Samurai out, 32 Spears. Ozutsu in the back. <laughs> he walled to his wall. Oh my <laughs> he walled to his wall. He's like, I'll, I'll take that wall. Yeah, no, I'll build my own wall. I, I'm pretty sure, don't get me wrong, but like, rainbow. <laughs> I, I, there is a word for that. I'm not going to say it, but I am going to say uh, it's something to do with this. <laughs> oh, it, it really is.
is one of those games, you know, we said at the beginning that this could be one of those games that's just a write-off. It is happening. Look at Krakeny. He's slow. Oh, the walls get deleted. You cannot rely on your enemy's walls. He deletes all of the walls that his enemy was relying upon, and now he's ready. He's got the elite upgrades. He's got elite army tactics that's come through. The Onibagasha yet to be upgraded, but the Samurai have got their upgrades, and that's what matter. Ozutsu behind this. Mango shots come through. Big damage. Crackity now maxed out. He's going to lose all of the Mangadels in the, in the blink of an eye. The Springles have done an incredible job, but now the Samurais are left to dish out the damage. Crackity looks to push back his opponent with infantry only. All of the siege is down. But remember, Crackity is now fighting up against crossbows, and we begin to see that crossbow paradox. This is something that I often talk about. In low numbers, crossbows are better against the uh, the um, samurai or men at arms, but in really high numbers, they lose efficiency because you have to micro them. And it's only a matter of time until you are just overwhelmed. In the late game, there's so many things going on. And once again, we can see his opponent overwhelmed completely. Strelty numbers starting to really build over on that north side of the map. We'll bring back in the UI. And take a look how it's going for Crackity here. You can see that he's struggling to maintain that map presence, slowly pushing out like a volcano erupting. And now all the units beginning to march down the middle of the map. 2,300 food a minute. He's got massive amounts of farms here, but a distinct lack of bonuses on these. I'd, I'd be almost tempted to say, just put down a town center and look to get those bonuses in. You really, really need them when you've got that many farms. A single, just just a single town center right here, buffing up all of these farms would be amazing. How many? He's got 50 vills on farms at the moment, 52. And now big numbers, Streltsy together with the spears. FAQ heading back to the drawing board here. Have a look at this. Oh my Lord. Kraken here now beginning to push forward. The Ozutsu in the back, teeing off on the Streltsy, eliminating them completely. And now on the front line, he's got absolutely nothing to deal with the Samurai. He breaks off a couple, heads them over towards that right side of the screen. Ozutsu continue to, firing on the, to fire on the Streltsy. The Samurai, the Banner men have dropped their banners, but the Samurai don't care. 25 damage, pumping out this absolute insane amount of units towards his opponent. More upgrades coming through. We see that his opponent is trying his best to defend. He's got so many resources in the bank, but not enough production. Compare that over to Krakeny, and he's put Yoroshiro's in every damn building he can find. He's only got a little bit of gold left in the bank, but it's not going to matter. He's just in the opponent in the opponent's base. Where are those? He's got to click the tickets. I think he's already clicked them. Where are the militia? We can see there's a couple of militia out on the front looking to try and defend here. 186 health on those bad boys. Ozutsu behind though, just teeing off on all of these units. You can see them just having a field day out here. More samurais rallying across. Oh my God, there's so many units he's got now. Beginning to clean up the villagers. 34 workers taken out already this game. Ozutsu, Ozutsu, the hero of the game. We were looking for a hero siege unit. It turns out it might be the Ozutsu. Look at this unit go. One of the best units in the game. And that's gonna be it. The defensive masterpiece from Crackity is absolutely online. And he does what the Viper could not. He pulls out a massive victory in this game. Absolutely incredible stuff from him. Make sure you go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you haven't already, go subscribe to his channel. Go say good day for me. Wow.